By the afternoon, most of the villagers hadn't left the house. At that time, a gray Cadillac drove into Langley. The villagers stood around the gate of the house and pointed at the far-off car. What kind of rich man has come to the village to visit their relatives this time? Let me, let me! Holden, with a proud face, pushed away the crowd and went to the road to meet the Cadillac. Everyone understood at once that the people in the car seemed to be acquaintances of Holden. Soon, the Cadillac stopped at the gate of the house, parking next to the White Knight as well as Holden's light blue car. Holden opened the door for the people in the Cadillac with great care and began talking to the people in the car with a smile. When the people in the car emerged, the villagers suddenly cried out, Who is that? A man with reddish-brown, curly hair emerged from the car. He had a larger body and a very expensive blue suit on. He appeared quite noble and dignified. On his face, like gemstones, two blue irises were inlaid. He had the slightly curved nose of an eagle, giving a sense of intelligence. Mr. Silva, I'm really upset to bother you to come all the way to this remote village. Holden first spoke with the man in Swahili. He turned to Langley villagers, who were shocked. He proudly introduced the man. Everyone, this is a famous gem merchant from overseas, Mr. Anderson Silva. Everyone clapped and welcomed him. Villagers mostly stayed in the rural area year-round, and they almost never saw anyone who was so clearly well-off. Hearing from Holden that Silva was so important, they looked at him curiously and shook his hand fiercely. Owen's son-in-law is so powerful that he could even invite foreign gem merchants to our village. I'll ask Mr. Guilford later to see if I can get my son a good job. As the villagers practically worshipped him, Holden gained a little sense of happiness. He looked at Aiden, who was frowning. Hey, are you feeling well, little nephew? Hope the fish stew last night is sitting well with you. Holden was even happier that he could come up with such a witty taunt. He had invited Silva with the intention of putting Aiden in his place once and for all. You know, my dear friend is the largest jeweler in the Southern Hemisphere. He can buy ten of your worthless fish by pulling a gem out of his case at random. Holden straightened up as he said that. Owen was frowning as well, Holden noticed. In fact, the entire family seemed to be either embarrassed or blatantly angry. None of them felt that Holden's stunt was particularly impressive. Where was the skill in inviting an outsider to disturb a family celebration just to prove a point? much less a highbrow, upper-class man like Mr. Silva. What Holden did not know was that the reason why Aiden had frowned was not because he was struggling with jealousy or disappointment. Actually, he was struggling with a much different problem. Where have I seen this man before? Aiden touched his chin, feeling that Silva looked more familiar the more that Aiden looked at him. And Silva, the entire time Aiden had seen him, had been focusing on one thing. It was the White Knight parked next to his own car. Silva pulled Holden's sleeve. Holden, do you know where the owner of this car is now? He said anxiously. After hearing Silva's words, Holden turned his head and looked around. When he saw that Silva was referring to the White Knight, Holden could not help from shaking his head. He had arrived later than Aiden. He didn't know that the car was Aiden's. He thought it belonged to someone else from the town. Mr. Silva, what's wrong with the car? Holden asked. My God! Silva looked at Holden in disbelief. You don't even recognize a car from K Group? K? Are you sure? Holden searched his mind for a moment, but he couldn't remember what famous car company was called K. Fortunately, Silva didn't care about that. He began to go into detail about the company. K Group is a well-known automobile manufacturer throughout the world, especially their Poseidon series and their Raytheon series. They're some of the most famous cars in the country. Most importantly, Silva looked at the White Knight as if he were going to eat it up. He said obsessively, Last year I heard that the K Group produced a limited edition car called the White Knight, a one of a kind. After I saw the picture, my god, you don't know the feeling that overcame me. I fell in love with that car. Silva tried to calm down his emotions, but he was still fanatical as he said, so I contacted Anthony K, the CEO, hoping to buy the car. But K said that the car had been given to someone else. I didn't sleep well for a week. But now I see it again today, the White Knight. Oh, this must be the fate of God. Looking at Silva unable to take his eyes off the White Knight, Aiden smacked his head. He finally remembered who Silva was. A while ago, Anthony had mentioned that there was a rich foreigner who had wanted to pay a high price for the White Knight. At that time... 
Aiden had laughingly asked what price the person was offering. Anthony had told them that the foreigner was a nobleman and gem merchant, and he was willing to give 88 fine deep-sea sapphires in exchange for the White Knight. The deep-sea sapphire was a rare gem that could only be found in certain areas of South America. 88 deep-sea sapphires were far more valuable than the White Knight, but at that time, Aiden had still refused. After all, many aspects of the White Knight were irreplaceable to him. It was also then that Anthony had given Aiden a picture of Silva, which was why Aiden had recognized him. Is the owner here? I'd like to trade the car for 88 deep-sea sapphires. Sure enough, Silva yelled out the same offer that had been made to Aiden months before. Holden was startled. As an international trade merchant who traveled around the globe all the time, he certainly understood the value of a deep-sea sapphire. It was a precious gem that cost more than $1,500 per carat and was exclusively owned, bought, and sold by the highest of the upper class. In the meantime, Holden's head was growing numb. Although he had made a small profit in recent years, he was still far behind Silva's wealth, a local tyrant who spent millions of dollars on luxuries alone. Although Holden was so shocked that he couldn't speak, the villagers of Langley were even more shocked to hear Silva's words. They all zeroed in immediately on what Silva was talking about. Holden didn't know who the White Knight belonged to, but they did. 